we are selective about our payments. So we get trained and there's, there's, there's oversight in the classroom. So we make sure that they're, they're, they are the right and really the right to, to deliver the program to really support the one. And any last questions regarding um, a pathway to fostering? I just wonder if you could invite potential fosterers um, to these peers to get the Yeah. 
small number of children relatively, but these things have a really significant impact where they work. Um, I think the, the, the other area just to highlight is how we are considering this approach to fostering to adopt. You can see there are two children we've already um, been successful with, which is incredible to see it really. And it means they've had the same place from the start. They've not gone from a foster care place and became a care and adoption place. That is an achievable program, but it really does um, sharpen thinking around time scales. And it's all about, and I should not stress this, it's not all about doing things quicker, because it's no good if the balanced scorecard looks terrific and then 30% of our adoptions break down. We've got to get the timing right for every child, we've got to use the opportunities for that for each child to achieve that. And you can see that um, whilst the scorecard will take a while to improve, it's about sustainable school, in the last six months um, um, we've gone from an average of 213 days from the court order placement order to the child being matched with the doctor. Uh, we have the average on our balance school card of 261. If we keep that up, the school card can be really good. But it's not all about the school card. We can show that the intervention that we introduce has made a big difference. And moving on to the journey to adoption, section 2.11, um, whilst there's not a significant uh, improvement in that average from when children become looked at as being adopted, clearly that family finding work has made an impact on that time scale as well. We're just just over that was the government benchmark there in the last six months. Um, and there's a lot of work going on on that side to improve that as well. So they're, they're really the, the key points. And um, what's not surprising is that the government research around what people are seeing in their think bubble for what you need to be able to prove an adopter is exactly the same in that research as it is for fostering. So we have the same things to address and overcome around recruiting adopters as we would as the case. Yes, Anna?
is a million, you won't be spending the budget, you've got a grant of 600,000. Would a significant input of finance significantly reduce things like that 143 waiting days time to 100? Or would that make no difference to your outcomes? Yeah, I, I think I'll pick up. I've not finished answering all your questions. So it, it fits with that because it's about support elements. So uh, some of this overspend is attributed to the fact that. No, what about the overspend? If we okay. gave you more okay. money, okay. would you achieve more? Um, I would say that what we planned with the grant for this year would just, just give us the sort of leverage we need to make improvements. Uh, I would have to think about that because when we were obviously provided with the grant, it gave us a chance to think through the sorts of things we could do with the financial support of government and the council's um, agreement to use the money in that way. Uh, and, and that took a lot of thought and we, we put a lot of things together in place. We haven't spent all the grant yet, we're still looking to do our program. If somebody was to say there was additionality, we would have to take that away because that's what council rules. But certainly with the grant plan we have, it should be addressing this as well as that's what we intend to do. But alongside that, Thank <laughs> you. 